Hi, my name is David Kelsey, and today we're going to do some exercises, some practice exercises on Lecture 8, uh, which is on fallacies and reasoning. So in each of the examples we're going to look at, you want to try to pick out the fallacy uh, that's in place, right? Okay, so the first one, it says, save your money, nothing will make your teeth perfectly white, right? This is about, like, uh, whitening your teeth or something. And uh, this seems to be a perfectionist fallacy, right? Obviously, when you whiten your teeth, they don't need to be perfectly white, just sort of like whiter or something. Okay, the next one, it says, um, Jane complains because she doesn't like the way I clean. Of course, she wants to be able to eat off the floor, right? Here's what we call a straw man. So the idea is that the position here has been misrepresented, right? Jane is probably asking for something to be cleaned, and the response here is to change that position, like sort of clean this to, uh, you know, I want to be able to eat off the floor, right? Just because we clean something, we don't have to clean it that well, right? And so that would be a straw man. The next example, it says, don't read the New York Times. It's filled with liberal propaganda, okay? Um, this is a classic example of an ad hominem. Um, it kind of looks like a personal attack, right? Ad hominem. Uh, the next example says, skeptic, uh, why is Genesis the only acceptable account of how the world came to be? And then the believer says, show me an explanation that makes more sense, right? This kind of move uh, is, is a classic case of misplacing the burden of proof, right? When it's like, show me an explanation that makes more sense, right? The burden is then shifted back onto the other side without any reason for doing so, right? That's, that's uh, misplacing the burden. Um, it's uh, the next one says not picking up after your dog is unsanitary since it's so unhygienic. So it's an, um, it's uh, unsanitary because it's unhygienic, right? Well, the interesting thing is those really mean the same thing. So the the premise is the same as the conclusion. So that would be begging the question. Uh, Limbaugh, that pompous windbag, you can't believe what he says about climate science, right? That would be a, an ad hominem, right? Calling someone a pompous windbag. Uh, baking powder is toxic. How could you doubt that? Right? Um, to me, <clears throat> to me, that looks kind of like a, a burden of proof mistake, right? How could you doubt that? The next one, it says, we have every right to be late on the rent. Management won't fix anything. The toilet is leaking and the doorbell doesn't work. They won't even let us paint or keep a pet. So this one is kind of that, uh, that idea where you're making excuses. You're cooking up excuses for something. Uh, paying, you know, paying your your uh, rent late, and so this is what we call rationalizing. Uh, the next one it says, sure, it sounds good in theory, but curbing violence in movies doesn't make sense. It's crazy to think they should only make movies for kids, right? So here uh, you have you have the the position really that's being um, you know sort of looked at is is that we're curbing violence in movies, and notice what happens is is that that position is twisted to uh, only making movies for kids, right? Just because we're curbing violence doesn't mean we have to only make kid movies, right? And so that's, again, what we would call straw man, right? The next one here, it says, if we expand the com commuter bus program, where is it going to end? Will we want to have a trolley system, then a light rail system, then expand Metrolink to our area? A city this size hardly needs and can hardly afford all these amenities. This is, uh, looks kind of like a slippery slope, right? We go from expanding the commuter bus program to all these other things, right? Where's it going to end? That, that's a slippery slope fallacy. Okay, the next one. How could God have created the world if God didn't exist? So what's, what's this one? Well, this one, <clears throat> this one appears to be right. If you, if you think about what's going on, um, the point seems to be that uh, God didn't create the world because there's no God or something, right? Which is, it looks kind of like a begging the question mistake. Um, the next one, it says, he wants to lower the drinking age. Forget about that. He owns a liquor store. Uh, that would be a kind of ad hominem, personal attack, probably. Uh, mistake, uh, ad hominem mistake. Uh, sure, a cruise would be nice, but we can't spend every last cent on vacations, right? Here's again what we have is a straw man, okay? Because uh, the position being considered is that we're taking a cruise and that's uh, sort of altered or changed to spending every last cent on vacations, which clearly you don't have to do that to take a cruise, right? 
The next one, it says high speed rail travel between here and St. Louis is something we should support unless you can explain to me why we shouldn't. Right at the very end there, it says, unless you can explain to me why we shouldn't is a kind of uh, misplacing the burden of proof mistake, right? Trying to shift the burden back on the other side without any reason for doing so. Uh, it says vote for the new parking garage on the next one here. If we don't build it, people will have no place to park. So this, uh, to me, this strikes me as a couple of things. One, it strikes me as a kind of slippery slope, right? If we don't build the parking garage, nobody will have, uh, you know, there'll be no parking essentially. Um, it also sort of strikes me as a false dilemma. Like either we build this parking garage or people don't have anywhere to park. So it kind of strikes me as both of those. The next one, it says the Democrats say they want the government to help all Americans translation. They want the government to run everything. Here again is a straw man, right? Um, we go from the Democrats helping Americans to running everything, right? That's clearly uh, reconfiguring, misconstruing the position. So that was what we call a straw man. And then the next one, it says overheard. Well, I think that's too much to tip her. It's more than 15%. Next time it will be 20, then 25, where will it stop? Right, so this is a, a slippery slope kind of fallacy, right? It's 15, then it's 20, it's 25, where it will stop, right? All of that is a, is a slippery slope. Um, the next one, it says, it's obvious that abortion is wrong. After all, everybody deserves a chance to be born, right? So think about what this is saying. Abortion is wrong because everybody deserves a chance to be born, right? Essentially, those are the same position. So this is what we call begging the question again. <clears throat> okay, so then uh, the next one it says here, I think I was treated unfairly. I got a ticket out on McCray Road. I was doing about 60 miles an hour and the cop charged me with traveling at an unsafe speed. I asked him just exactly what would have been a safe speed on that particular occasion, 50, 45, and he couldn't tell me. Neither could the judge. I tell you, if you don't know what speeds are unsafe, you shouldn't give tickets for unsafe speeds, right? Uh, so this is a, a really nice example of what we call line drawing fallacy, right? So what the uh, person here is essentially doing is asking for specific points at which the speed becomes unsafe. But of course, that's not really how uh, that works. So uh, the next one here says capital punishment was invented during barbaric times. No civilized society ought to tolerate it. Okay, so this is a, an example of genetic fallacy. Right? It's sort of like re trying to refute capital punishment just based upon its origin or something. Uh, the next one says, of course, Chinese green tea is good for your health. If it weren't, how could it be so beneficial to drink it? Okay, so this is uh, what we call begging the question here, right? Uh, this is essentially saying that it's good for you because it's beneficial to drink, uh, which is the same thing. So that would be begging the question. Uh, the next one says, overheard, no, I'm against this health plan business. None of the proposals are going to fix everything. You can uh, bet on that. Okay, and um, so this is an example of perfectionist fallacy. Uh, so this is essentially saying that um, the only reason I'm going to support the health plan is if it fixes absolutely everything. And of course, um, we would, you know, we wouldn't really want to promote a health plan like that. Uh, you know, you just want to promote a health plan if it made things a bit better. Right, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? Okay, so the next one says, I'll tell you what Congress passed. They call it healthcare reform, but what it really is is communism, pure and simple. It's designed to tax everybody who works so people who don't work can still have an easy life, okay? So the first thing this strikes me as is, of course, is something like hyperbole, right? It seems, um, you know, sort of exaggerated, but on that same point, it's also it appears to be a, a kind of straw man, right? Um, it's uh, the discussion here is about you know healthcare reform, and uh, that is kind of adjusted or changed or misconstrued into communism, right? And so that's uh, kind of straw man. The next one it says we've been very frugal of late, so it's time to get a new car. Uh, this is again a kind of like uh, excuse making, which is uh, you know what we call rationalizing, right? It's rationalizing getting a new car just because we've been frugal of late. <clears throat> okay, so then the last few that we have here, this one says, uh, will we have an expanding government or will we balance the budget, cut government waste, and eliminate unneeded programs? 
This is what we would call a false dilemma, right? These obviously aren't the only options. The next one, it says, it doesn't make any sense to speak of tracing an individual human life back past the moment of conception. After all, that's the beginning and you can't go back past the beginning. Okay, This is a begging the question type of move. Um, it's essentially saying that we can't go past the moment of conception because can't go past the moment of conception. That's what it essentially says. So. Uh, even if we outlaw guns, we're still going to have crime and murder, so I really don't see much point to it. Um, hopefully you can see that this one is a perfectionist fallacy, right? The point here is that uh, it looks like what we're trying to be persuaded of here is that um, the only reason we would outlaw guns is if it completely wiped out crime and murder. And of course, that's not the point, really, is it? To outlaw guns, the reason you would want to do that is because it would make the world a safer place, right? And um, not because it would completely do away with crime, you know. So, uh, The last example we have then, look, maybe you think it's okay to legalize travel casinos, but I don't. Letting every last group of people in the country open a casino uh, is a ridiculous idea uh, bound to cause trouble. Um, here, you, you go from this position of legalizing travel cons casinos to letting every last group of people in the country open, open a casino. So this is what we again call a straw man. It's sort of misconstruing the position to make it seem kind of like absurd, right? Okay, so, uh, so that is the end of our exercises here today. I hope you, hope you got, you know, starting getting the hang of these fallacies and reasoning. And, uh, you know, hopefully you can go ahead and then start to practice these yourself and to look for them uh, yourself when you, you know, uh, you know, look, you use our book and, and go out and start um, seeing these actually out there in the, uh, in the real world. So hopefully it helps you with that. So uh, again, thanks so much. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.